Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, should be 2024 now by about the time that I put this video out. And I really just wanted to go ahead and just do a little bit of an update um, on the channel as far as what's going on. Um, for those of you who are subscribed, uh, you may have noticed that probably since about, I don't know, September, I've only released maybe one or two videos. And that's just because I've been really, really busy. I decided to go ahead and tackle a project on my house that needed to be done anyway. Uh, originally, I was gonna hire somebody to do it, but then when I looked at the pricing, I realized I could save a whole ton of money um, doing it myself. I had water damage um, because the previous people that had installed the vinyl siding on the house didn't really do it correctly. Um, and there's a few just different in terms of water intrusion and how you prevent it. There's a few different things they had done that weren't the greatest. Um, so I had a lot of water damage, a lot of rot to replace. So I went ahead and I just fixed all the water damage Resided, re-soffited, re, -sided, re, re the entire house and it, it took me quite a while. I mean, I was doing it myself and working full time and, and just doing things on my time off and that led to um, not much uh, being recorded or at the very least I did record some things but just not having time to edit. Um, and then that pretty much led right into Thanksgiving. There was a few things, if you caught the uh, wax ring for the toilet install video that I did that had ruined the ceiling in my downstairs bathroom and we were having company coming over for Thanksgiving. Uh, that was right about when I finished the house and so I needed to get that ceiling patched up in the bathroom at least looking presentable for people coming over for Thanksgiving. Um, and even though I didn't get out here where I live in October for the early hunting season, I am a huge hunter. I pretty much just sell out and that's all that I do during hunting season is just go sit in the woods and try to fill my tags. And so that's pretty much what I've been doing, working, hunting, and then just kind of recovering from months of working on the house, getting things cleaned up, organized, and put back away. Um, but like I said, I just wanted to give you guys an update on what's going on with the things that you've been used to seeing on the channel. So we'll go ahead and we'll start with the WRX here. Um, I have quite a lot of work coming for this car. A um, couple big projects. Um, one being the wheel and tire setup. I know we've discussed it in the past. Um, I've explained to you my reasoning and things I wanna do. I do believe that I've made up my mind. I still have a few things to measure and take a look at before I make my final decision. But I think at least for now, I'm holding off on the Carlton fender flares. Um, or I should say the Carlton style fender flares from Subi flares. Um, and I'm just going to go with an aggressive wheel fitment that will fit the stock body. And really the reason for that is just because I want something different for this summer when the car gets on the road and I don't want this project to get delayed and just never switch from these wheels. These wheels did me wonders for years that I've painted them different color, three different colors now and I've rocked them for a very long time. I just want something bigger, wider than a 16 by seven, um, and just something a little bit nicer, uh, more suited to the car, more of like sort of the final look that I want for this car. And I've got some big changes coming in my life soon, and I feel like if I at least don't do that, it's never gonna get done. So um, what I'll do, and like I said, I still, I've been going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Still some measurements to do, but I'm like 95% sure that we're just going to go with a nice aggressive wheel in like an 18. The wheel I'm looking at right now is like an 18 by eight and a half. I would have loved an 18 by nine and a half, but the style wheel, the particular model uh, wheel that I'm looking at just doesn't come in anything wider than an 18 by eight and a half. Um, and then that's in a plus 30. I think that should work. I have to take some measurements and figure out. Um, I think at that point, it's just going to come down to tire size and, and whether it's, it's going to fit or not. Um, and like I said, if I had done the Subi flares, um, people have been giving mixed reviews saying that they need a lot of work. Uh, they're not like the old Carlton's that you could pretty much just slap on and they fit. They need a lot of work to fit nicely against the car. So you're talking body work. Then you got to cut your fenders. The fronts are simple, but the rear, you got the two layers, the inner and the outer layer of the fender, which then you have to bend together, weld the seam up, seam seal it. And then the fenders would need to get painted, um, which I do want to get and start painting some things here now that I've got a decent uh, air compressor set up, painting things myself with actual, an actual spray gun and not rattle cans. And so that was a whole project that I just, the more I thought about it, I don't think I'll be able to get it done this winter. And I just want a different fitment, different style, different look of wheel for this car. Like I said, I'm about 95% sure that's the route we're going. So stay tuned for that. Something's gonna get done. Whether I change my mind again and we decide to do the flares or not, uh, that'll be coming. Um, I did, I don't know if it was me, 
or if I just got a bum battery, but I did drain this Odyssey battery down to zero, I actually left my um, access port on for quite a while, the car sat um, and it drained the battery. And I know they say that once an AGM batteries drain out, you can't charge them. Um, I did, I even tried the hooking a good 12 volt battery up to it first and then hooking the charge up, it kind of, they say it'll force the charge into an AGM battery if it goes flat. I tried that, um, but again, I just, it won't seem to hold the charge. It'll charge up fine. Like I'll throw it on my float charger here. It'll charge up fine. But if you take the charger off within about 12 hours, there's like no charge left on the battery. So I'm going to see if I can warranty that out. And then if I can't, I don't think I'm going to go with an AGM again. I've been looking at the anti-gravity batteries, um, especially with that restart function that some of them have. Um, so if I can find something in a small format like this, I think that might be what we're going to go with. And then I had mentioned it before. Um, I'm well beyond a thousand subscribers now, but I kind of wanted to just do like a, I don't know what you want to call it, like a thank you video for reaching a thousand subscribers. Uh, the point of filming this, I'm about 1350 subscribers, um, but I have a whole plethora of parts over here. And I'll give you a little sneak peek on probably the biggest ones going in. You can see we've got some factory STI stuff here, some white line stuff, but we do have some front STI control arms that I've already done up in that gold accent color for everything for the car. So we got that going on. We're gonna be doing a whole suspension refresh, not every single suspension component, but there is gonna be a very massive video coming where we're refreshing a whole ton of stuff on this car. And then it took me a while to get these, but I have the More Sport one inch lowered correction arms. I wish they offered something a little bit more than a one inch. It looked to me, the research I did, that in the past they offered a two inch, uh, but they don't anymore. But anyway, Rally Sport Direct, if you're looking for more sport parts for your Subaru, Rally Sport Direct is the US based dealer for more sport. So I just contacted them and I was able to get these one inch correction arms in. These still need to get painted. I'm gonna do these in the same gold color that those arms are. So keep a lookout for that video. That should be coming relatively soon now that hunting season's over and I've got some time freed up to get some work done. And that moves us on to the Forester over here, which I was just filming up an outro for a video that will be out probably before 2024. Should be the last week of December here. And I mean, I'm still working on that. This is just my daily driver. It's my reliable daily driver. We fix things that break and we do some uh, just fun things to do with it here and there since even though this is the most enjoyable car to drive, my favorite car to drive, I drive this car way more than this car. So it's fun to just do some things. So I've got boxes over here for the Forester. We've got some stuff just messing around with some things on the car. We've also got some preventative maintenance stuff in there um, that we need to do, we need to tackle. And then later this summer when the WX is back on the road, just in case something goes wrong and I need a second vehicle, we're going to be doing at least this wheel bearing back here because it's starting to go bad. Um, and living up here in the Northeast, that might be a nightmare. I did this one by myself. The dealer did the driver's side. I did this one by myself uh, a few years ago. That was when the car was just shy of 100,000 miles. We're quickly approaching 200,000 miles and these are still the originals in the rear. So I have a feeling that's gonna be quite the nightmare in terms of rust in the rear end. And lastly, what seems to be your guys' favorite video, at least those that are, that are watching the most, is this little lawnmower project that I got going on with the snowblower. Um, we've got a video coming out. I probably won't get to editing that until early January 2024 um, with a lot of the final updates. Um, as of filming this, there's still a few things I need to do to add to the last bit of filming that I did. Um, but it's there. And then a little sneak peek if this comes out before that video. We got the chains on the back there. But I haven't had a chance to use it. We've had a really weird winter. Um, it's December 26th at the time of filming this, and it's almost 50 degrees out today. So um, on one hand, I do feel a little bit silly going ahead and getting this big old snowblower when uh, it doesn't look like we're gonna be getting so much snow. It is gonna be really nice to use this instead of the uh, push behind snowblower I've been using. And then on top of that, I just, this is gonna turn into my workhorse snowblower, uh, lawnmower, not a snowblower, just my workhorse lawnmower. Like I said, I got the nice new big mower here. Uh, last year I bought this to replace that mower since there was some reliability issues. Um, so we'll have some videos coming on that too. There's um, a lighting 
upgrade modification I want to do to that and I've already broken a couple parts on that already so we're gonna to need to replace those but we're still gonna be working on this doing some things um, I kind of want to fix up the front end here on this the plastic grill kind of broke apart started to fall apart and um, I'm still getting a whole lot of smoke on startup it's not the oil dripping like I thought it was it's either a worn out cylinder bore, which it entirely may be. This is an old lawnmower on the lawn tractor that I've put through its paces by every stretch of the imagination, way more than it was probably ever intended for. Uh, there's a ton of hours on this thing. So it is entirely possible that um, the cylinder is just worn and oil is seeping when it sits and then when you start it up, it's burning off. Or it could also just be fuel, um, a suggestion I was given in a Facebook group that I'm part of. So I'm gonna put an inline fuel shutoff on this and just see if that sorts it out. If not, we might be seeing a video on repowering this lawnmower because this is only the 14 and a half horsepower engine in this. I'm not trying to say that that's not useful or capable at all, but mowers now are coming with much higher horsepower than 14 and a half horsepower. So it might be kind of a cool project to go ahead and, and repower this. But, um, and then of course, outside of that, um, any sort of DIY video that I feel like is worth filming and putting out there for you guys, um, I'm gonna keep doing stuff like that. Like I said, um, like you've already seen, if you're subscribed to the channel, was the fixing of the leaky wax ring on the toilet. I thought it was something worthwhile to bring the camera around and uh, film that and throw that out there as, uh, just to show you can DIY things like that. You don't always have to call a professional. So that's what's coming up for 2024. Uh, the vehicles, they really were my inspiration for starting the channel. So we're going to have much more content with the vehicles and then the small engine stuff. Um, but outside of that, looking at the analytics of my YouTube channel, um, those aren't the stuff that are getting the views and the subscribers, it doesn't seem like. Uh, so I'm gonna try to branch out a little bit more and just do more just generic stuff. I'm always out here in the shop. I'm always doing little things around the house um, that I just think are kind of cool, clever ideas um, that are definitely DIY type things. So really, that's just kind of my motivation for putting this out there. It's just a little update heading here into 2024. Um, like I said, I did surpass the thousand subscriber mark, so that means I am making money off the YouTube channel. And that doesn't happen without you guys. It doesn't happen without you guys subscribing, liking, commenting, giving me feedback on the videos. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to keep you guys up to date. I haven't gone anywhere. The videos are going to start coming out regularly again. Um, and if I can figure out how to do it, just simply because I haven't done it yet, I'm also going to put a poll on the channel. So if you've watched all the way to the end of the video here, look out for that poll and please answer it for me if you're subscribed to the channel. I want to know what made you subscribe to the channel. Um, was it the WRX? Was it the Forester? Was it the lawnmower? Was it something around the house? My sump pump video, even though that was filled in a dark basement with a GoPro, which don't, doesn't film well in the dark. Uh, that's my best performing video out of all my videos. Um, I'll throw a poll on there and please go ahead and answer that for me and let me know what it was um, that made you subscribe to my channel. So as always guys, like every outro on my video, if you like the video, be sure to hit that like button. Feel free to leave a comment below and if you're not subscribed already, please consider subscribing. Thanks.